Hello everyone, this is Ernesto Manuel Cantone with SD Microelectronics, part of the MEMS and Sensors marketing team here in US. One of ST's strategic objectives is to increase the footprint of our sensors in the industrial market. And in this presentation, we'll discuss ST products and tools to achieve it. Today, we are going to talk about smart industry, or as you can find it often referred, Industry 4.0. The number four refers to a fourth industrial revolution after the first, the introduction of mechanization of manual work in the 18th century through the use of water and steam power. The second, the emergence of mass production and assembly line using electricity in the 19th century. The third, in the late 90s, early 2000s, it refers to the adoption of electronics, computers and automation and the opportunity of using IT to further automate production lines. Industry 4.0 refers to the opportunity of using IoT and cloud to automate complex tasks and of building smart and autonomous systems fueled by data and machine learning. The characteristic of this smart system is the capability to sense data, exchange data between the system parts via some mean of communication and process data even in a distributed manner. What really enables Industry 4.0 today is the miniaturization of sensors and the widespread availability of microcontrollers and connectivity integrated circuits. You can already find references to Industry 5.0 as the cooperation between men and machines, but let's consider that an application enabled by Industry 4.0 for now. The smart industry effort unlocks multiple business opportunities, producing more efficiently and in more environmentally friendly manner, responding to demand with more flexibility and with more customization enabling better use of manufacturing and supply chain data, and overall providing a better and safer human experience. An immediate opportunity we want to address today is to optimize the maintenance of equipment, taking advantage of the data available from the equipment itself. When we talk about equipment, we refer to various assets, rotating equipment and related parts, HVAC systems, elevators and escalators, just to name a few. Maintenance is a set of actions performed by a dedicated professional to keep a machine working properly. One common approach is to schedule a maintenance quarterly, pretty much what we do with the oil change in our cars. This is simple to plan, but maintenance may happen too late or too early and may not have been necessary. A second option is to condition the maintenance to an inspection and monitor of certain parameters. Here also, we are tied to a schedule and a professional inspects the asset using bulky and likely expensive tools and needs to analyze the data before taking further actions. Think about our home HVAC system check. Sometimes a repair is needed, sometimes not, and there is no guarantee that something could break between two checkpoints. With the availability of affordable sensor nodes systems, the Industry 4.0 concept comes to life. We can now instrument every asset with the sensors and communications to monitor it continuously. Sensors are there to detect deviation from normal behavior and the system will generate warnings and alarms to promptly schedule an intervention. This approach requires a complex overall system but offer many benefits. Maximize running time of the equipment and target the maintenance only when needed. Detecting failures at their early stages often results in smaller and cheaper repairs and lead to longer lifetime expectancy of the asset. Repairs can be more efficient. For example, thanks to the analysis of the data collected, the service technician will arrive on site with the right spare part already pre-ordered. What does a complete architecture for a predictive maintenance application look like? We mentioned the asset in the factory floor and the sensor nodes, and those are connected directly or via gateway to an enterprise cloud, local or remote. This implements a system with distributed computing capabilities with the opportunity of processing data from the sensor nodes themselves to the local gateway to the cloud itself. 
In this slide, we define as edge both the smart sensor nodes and the gateways, as both can process data locally, addressing latency and privacy concerns. The data can be then stored and analyzed, and the integration with enterprise resource planning, manufacturing execution systems, and data warehouse applications allows to close the loop with the physical world, and the cyber physical systems we mentioned earlier, and materialize the business proposition of the smart industry. In our example, this closed loop is represented with scheduling a maintenance call and sending a technician to the factory floor. This is the installation point of a failure curve, plotting a machine condition over time. For a motor installed at factory, when conditions start to change, one of the first symptoms is usually a change in the ultrasound signature. Being able to monitor in that spectrum allows us to spot a change very early, months from the actual failure. The next symptom is vibration and the availability of dedicated high bandwidth sensors also leads to predicting a possible failure way before its time. Power refers to being able to monitor the voltage and current parameters of the motors, and as they also can signal an abnormal behavior, but only weeks from the failure itself. After this, one can start to hear audible noise and eventually sense increased heat and detect smoke, but probably too late to avoid a serious damage. How can ST technology help? ST Microelectronics is a market leader in MEMS sensors technologies, with more than 17 billion parts shipped as of today. We are expanding our leadership in consumer MEMS to the industrial segment, leveraging our proven manufacturing capabilities with the introduction of the industrial sensors portfolio, all tested to higher standards, extended temperature ranges, and with a shelf longevity of 10 years guaranteed. You can see here the industrial version of our leading success is IMU, ISM's 330DHCX, accelerometer gyroscope combo best in class in regards to power consumption and noise density. This device supports the traditional ST embedded capabilities with smart FIFO up to 9 kilobytes, and the X in the part number denotes the availability of a programmable finite state machine and machine learning core. Unique features that enables local data processing in the sensor ASIC for best possible speed of operation and power consumption on the overall sensor node. We have then the industrial versions of our magnetometer IAS2MDC and eCompass ISM330DHC, and the standalone accelerometers IAS2DH and IAS2DLPC, allowing lower power consumption while still monitoring an event. Let's focus then on the inertial sensors designed with a specific task in mind. IAS3DHHC, our first high precision inclinometer with low noise and high stability over temperature and time, and IAS3DWB, the ultra wideband vibrometer that we'll later discuss in details. We mentioned the sound and ultrasound, and here we present our MEMS microphones. First, the digital ones, the industrial grade top port. IMP34DT05 for sound acquisition up to 24 kHz and best-in-class total harmonic distortion. And our latest portfolio addition, the bottom port MP23DB01HP, best-in-class signal-to-noise ratio at 64 dB and acoustic overload point at 134 dB SPL. For ultrasound detection, we offer MP23ABS1, our analog bottom port microphone capable of acquisition up to 80 kHz. Environmental sensors can also play a role in predictive maintenance. And in this category, we have pressure with LPS22HH, which is dust resistant, fully molded package, and LPS27HHW with a metal lead and gel filling to allow water resistant grading and resiliency versus harsh environment. Both are high performance and accurate and robust to thermal and external stress. 
Our temperature sensor offering then is composed of both analog and digital output devices with industry standard packages and features, and of high precision miniaturized devices like STTS 751 and STTS 22H, the latter with the same 10 years longevity commitments of our industrial grade sensors. If in need of temperature and relative humidity combo, we offer the low power consumption and small size HTS 221. Let's try to match the curve we discussed previously with our sensor technologies. On the x-axis, we have the bandwidth, and we can position our inertial and acoustic sensors compared to various use cases. Different failure modes have different frequency signatures. For example, unbalances and misalignments can be identified using a standard accelerometer, the most limited in bandwidth here, but the best in terms of power consumption. Bearings and cavitation failure modes would require the capability of sensing vibration at higher frequencies. And here we cover the case with our IMU or even better with our latest vibration sensor. Issues in gear mesh and bearings are in general creating the highest frequency failure signatures, hence the use of standard and ultrasound microphones. All these time domain signals can be converted to peaks in frequency domains running a fast Fourier transform on the host microcontroller. And the results can then be transferred with digital wireless communication methods with limited bandwidth. Let's take a mental note on these as we'll touch back later on the topic. Let's now focus on the newly introduced IIS DWB vibration sensor. How does a MEMS vibration sensor compare versus an industry standard piezo solution? Let's try to list the advantages of a MEMS approach in designing a vibration sensor. MEMS will be smaller in size, weight, and in power consumption. The sensor will then have a direct digital output, simplifying the interface with digital microcontroller host. Robustness to shock and fast recovery after shock is another pro, and the opportunity of having embedded functionalities is a big plus, and everything at a more affordable price. A piezoelectric vibration sensor will still offer an higher bandwidth and lower noise, but at a dramatically higher price point, a thousand and something versus sub $10 to give you an idea. And the MEMS vibration sensor approach target is not to replace a piezo one-to-one -one in their existing use cases, but rather to enable higher volume, lower cost monitoring of industrial machines with high quality sensor data and possibly using wireless interface. So let's introduce our IIS 3DWB, ultra wide bandwidth, low noise, three axis digital vibration sensor. The full scale of the sensor is selectable up to an optimal 16G, while most of the motor application will use 4G to 8G. The output data rate is fixed at 26.6 kHz, and these enable a wide measurement bandwidth of 5 kHz minimum. SPI interface to the MCU host is the recommended communication bus, allowing to fully utilize the vibration sensor measurement bandwidth for all three measurement axes. The communication to the host includes two fully programmable interrupt pins, and in line with other STMEM sensors, the device supports a big 3 kilobyte FIFO, programmable filters, temperature sensor, and self-test functions. The noise density of the component is a best-in-class 75 micro G over square hertz, and it can be further down reduced to 60 in single axis mode. The current consumption of the sensor is 1.1 milliamp, and while not comparable with the standard accelerometer, is still suitable for battery-powered applications. This is an industrial-grade sensor, so it operates at the extended minus 40 to 105 degrees Celsius range. Operating voltage is from 2.1 to 3.6 volt, and the package measures 2.5 by 3 millimeter, with a pinout compatible to our six axis IMUs. What are the KPIs for a sensor designed for vibration monitoring? First, wide and flat measurement bandwidth. Second, flat frequency response with sharp out-of-band roll-off and no aliasing. Low noise levels, and finally, stable thermal behavior. 
Let's see how IIS 3WB checks all these boxes. First and foremost, let's take a look at the frequency response of an analog sensor with its evident resonant frequency peak. Filtering is required to obtain a usable response, and some of the available devices are single axis. So when in need of multiple axis sensing, the bomb needs to be instantiated for each. The direct digital output of the is 3 wb with no external components is flat and ready to use, and already includes all the three axes. When we look at the frequency response graph of IIS 3DWB, we find it flat up to the 6.3 kHz cutoff frequencies at the minus 3 dB point. Thanks to this flat response, no calibration nor additional filtering in the host MCU is needed in the final product. Another important part of the frequency response characteristic is how steep it falls after 6.3 kHz, with a slope greater than 90 dB per decade resulting in an attenuation higher than 70 dB for frequencies above the 26.6 kHz ODR. Last and very important as well, there is an high attenuation of more than 50 dB achieved for high frequency signals folding potentially back inside the signal bandwidth. Let's take a look at the noise density. The IIS 3DWB filtering chain consists of four blocks. We have the mechanical sensing element, the analog front end and high speed ADC, the first low pass filter LPF1, and lastly, the optional composite filter, which allows additional filtering or digital functions. As a result of the sensor characteristic and the internal digital processing, we are reaching excellent values for the noise densities 75 micro G per square hertz for X and Y axis in three axis mode of operation. In single axis mode, thanks to a reconfiguration of how the internal sampling and filtering operates, the achievable sensor resolution of the active axis significantly improves with the noise density going down to 60 micro G per square hertz. Such noise densities are perfect for the resolutions required in the condition monitoring application the vibration sensor was designed for. The last important key performance indicator of the vibration sensor is its sensitivity drift over temperature. The drift stays within plus and minus 2% tolerance from the ideal linear curve over the full temperature range from minus 40 to plus 105 degrees C. This is a benefit for the condition monitoring application since no additional calibration or sensitivity compensation is required. Zero-G offset drift, a parameter important for traditional accelerometers application, is not important for a vibration sensor since DC operation is not of interest. Let's take a look at how we can position IIS 3WB versus some of its competitors in terms of performance and price. On the top right, we have an high bandwidth, low noise, single axis analog vibrometer with higher performances, but at a much higher price point, even without considering the more complicated bomb and signal processing required to handle its signal. On the bottom left, competitor B is offering both the three axis analog and digital devices with the medium bandwidth, slightly higher than ST IMUs, and overall not great noise performances and with a price that reflects the performance. ST positions IIS 3 dwb at higher performance for its little price premium, what we consider as weak spot for the application of interest. Our customers can evaluate the IIS 3 dwb as a standalone sensor with our professional MEMS tool and the Unicode GUI, available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. The evaluation kit available for IIS 3 wb is composed by a standard D24 interposer connected to the board hosting the sensor with a flex cable, allowing optimal placing of the sensor itself as close as possible to the vibration source. Alternatively, the vibrometer is part of the recently launched ST-Win sensor tile wireless industrial node as part of a complete system. Let's dig into the ST-Win characteristics and discuss its applications in the next slides. Here's a first snapshot of the kit. It includes a combination of industrial sensors for vibration analysis, 
sound emission up to 80 kilos and environmental monitoring. The system MCU is an STM32 L4 Plus and the out of the box connectivity is Bluetooth low energy. An optional Wi-Fi module is also available. The kit includes also an ST-Link V3 Mini to program, interface with, and debug the application. A plastic case with mounting holes and a rechargeable 480 milliamp hour LiPo battery. Looking at the core system boards, we can quickly identify the main MCU, the various sensors, and the expansion sockets, including ST-Mod Plus for connectivity modules already available in ST ecosystem. On the bottom of the board, there is a slot for a micro SD card for local storage of sensor data in not connected application. Looking at the block diagram, the ST-Win is centered around STM32L4R9, ultra low power ARM Cortex M4 clocked at 120 megahertz, sporting two megabyte of flash and 640 kilobyte of RAM. It's powered by ST DC to DC, battery charging and LDO devices, and all the expansion sockets and connectors are protected by ST ESDs protections, guaranteeing the design robustness. Soldered on the board as a standard wireless communication, there is SPBTLE1S, Bluetooth Low Energy 4.2 module, and an RS485 transceiver is available for wired industrial applications. There is a footprint also for the ST-Safe A110 secure element to securely store credentials of the connected product and offload cryptographic services of the main MCU. From the sensor's perspective, one can find here IIS 3DWB vibration sensor, ISM 330DHCX 6 axis IMU with machine learning core, the standalone lower power, lower bandwidth accelerometer IIS 2DH, and the 3 axis magnetometer IIS 2MDC. Several environmental sensors are also present and include temperature with STTS-751, humidity with HTS-221, atmospheric pressure with LPS-22HH, and the two MEMS microphones, MP23 ABS-1 with analog output and ultrasound capability, IMP34DT05A with digital PDM interface output. From the firmware standpoint, there are multiple options that we'll discuss in the next slides. Focusing on the sensors, you can see that all the part numbers we discussed previously are all available here in a convenient sensor node systems. This enables the user to experiment with a combination of sensors and understand which ones are matching best the needs of his end application. In this diagram, you can conveniently locate all the sensors and the connectivity module in the core system board. The schematics and layout are available on ST.com so that ST-Win can be used as a starting point in designing a custom device. Two expansion modules are also available on ST.com. First and foremost, a Wi-Fi module board to enable cloud-connected application, supporting a pre-certified Inventec module supporting 802.11 BGN 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi connectivity. Second, a microphone array with four analog microphones to enable application with advanced audio algorithms. Let's discuss the available firmware packages. ST Software ST Win Kit 1 supports multiple examples exercising basic functionality on the ST Win. We'd like to bring your attention to the high speed data log application that enables simultaneous data collecting from all the sensors at IODR via USB or recording on SD card. This is key to interface ST-Win with the standard sensors development tools and take full advantage of the machine learning core capability available in the ISM 330DHCX. You can find dedicated training material on machine learning core on ST6 axis IMUs on ST.com. Today's focus is predictive maintenance. 
and the function pack industrial predictive maintenance one is the optimal starting point to prototype an end-to-end -end application. Like all STS function packs, it's built on STM32 cube. It includes an hardware abstraction layer and middleware to support the various functions, including dedicated algorithms for advanced time and frequency domain signal processing and analysis of IIS CWB up to five kilohertz. The package includes also pressure, relative humidity, and temperature sensor monitoring, and audio algorithms for acoustic emission up to 20 kHz and ultrasound emission analysis up to 80 kHz. The out-of-the-box experience of STWIN is this function pack in its BLE version, while the full capability of an end-to-end -end application, including a cloud part, is enabled with the Wi-Fi version, for which the Wi-Fi expansion kit is required. Let's take a look at the experience enabled by STWIN and the STBLE sensor app, available on Google Play and iOS App Store. If not already programmed with this application, the STWIN can be easily programmed connecting the provided STLINK V3 Mini and dragging the pre-compiled binary in the function pack package in the target flash, exposed as mass storage via USB. Alternatively, stm 32 cube programmer can be used, and the firmware is available in source code as project for IAR, Kyle, and stm 32 cube IDE. Once programmed and supplied via USB or with the provided battery, the STWIN will advertise and can be connected to the STBLE sensor app, selecting it from the list. Once connected successfully, the first screen on the STBLE sensor app shows the real-time environmental sensor data values. In the second screen, it is possible to configure and to display the FFT charts from the vibration measurements. A sub-menu is available to change the parameters of the FFT engine, in particular the vibration sensor configuration, number of FFT samples, etc. The next screen in the iPhone app is called Plot Data, and it is designed to display the raw sensor data upon selection in a time graph. Finally, in the predictive maintenance screen, it's possible to check the real-time status of the RMS speed and peak amplitude acceleration of any of the three vibration sensor axes. This functionality is also available for the frequency domain through pre-configured thresholds at particular frequencies. Thresholds are predefined for good warning and alarm status via project source code header file and modifiable by the user. The most interesting use of STWIN involves a cloud application hosted by ST and powered by AWS services. One, we need the Wi-Fi expansion board for direct connectivity of STWIN to the AWS IoT core service with the function pack industrial predictive maintenance one. ST allows any user logged with these myst.com credentials to connect up to five sensor nodes simultaneously and use them for up to six months. The data collected by the sensors are accessible to the user only and available to download for further analysis. This is a sandbox for our customers to play free of charge and rapidly build a proof of concept with the ST development kits. Today we'll discuss how to connect the ST Win, but the dashboard is also compatible with IOLink sensor nodes connected via an AWS IoT Greengrass gateway built with the STM32 MP1 as explained in details in the solution predictive maintenance edge to cloud on ST.com. The data streamed from the sensor node to the cloud are humidity and temperature from HTS221, pressure from LPS22HH, vibration from the IIS3DWB, ultrasound emission from MP23ABS1. Both high bandwidth signals are pre-processed on the STM32 with a local FFT before being sent to the cloud. Rather than explaining all the functions, let me walk you through a live demo of the dashboard, for which I have my STWIN programmed with the Wi-Fi application of Function Pack Industrial Predictive Maintenance 1. The STWIN is then directly connected via USB to a USB port on my PC.
Okay, first thing, let's see how to program the correct firmware in the sensor tile.box. I'm on the function pack predictive maintenance one folder. Let's go to projects, stwin demonstration, the Wi Fi application, AWS on the binary, and let's drag and drop the binary into the stlink v3 that will program the flash of the uh, target, the stwin stm 32 l 4 plus. Okay, we're done here. I'll disconnect from the laptop the ST link and verify that I can connect to the board via terminal. Let's select the serial COM port 12 and wait for the board to reboot. There you go. So once on the dashboard, let's configure a new device we already have one device created here in my instance of the dashboard and as you see it will expire in six months from now so let's configure a new device and uh, you can augment uh, the device uh, characteristic also with uh, information like uh, a location Portland in my case and with the latitude and longitude of the location I'll show you why is that helpful and I create my object once I create the object the dashboard will provide a zip file containing certificate material that uh, uniquely identified the stwin node in this AWS instance. I will download uh, this file and I can download this file only once upon creation. And I will also copy the IoT endpoint, which is the URL that the device is going to connect to. So let's close this. I have a text file in which I'm going to paste the URL I just noted and I, you can notice here the name of the device and uh, I created a folder in which I'm going to copy all this uh, uh, certificate material okay so let's go back to the to the terminal, I'll insert here the Wi-Fi parameter the device is connecting the first thing that the device is going to ask is the URL for the endpoint I'm going to cut and paste the endpoint and the device name Second thing, the program is going to ask me for the identity of the device. The identity is uh, formed by three components, the root certificate, so a certificate common to all the device and issued by a certificate authority. I'm going to paste it here. Then it's going to ask me and press enter. It's going to ask me for to the device certificate, a device that is unique to the to this particular node I cut and paste and paste the device certificate and the, the private key that is used to sign uh, um, during a TLS handshake and should never leave uh, the sensor node in discussion there you go once given all these parameters the device has an identity and will start to connect to the AWS cloud
there's the connection happening and the, the first handshake with the WS and then I'm starting to send the data and as you see the board is now online. Now if I go on the dashboard I can start monitoring immediately the data coming out of the board and I can also add the other reference board that I already had connected previously. You can see here the data coming live from the two boards, um, one in uh, Portland just created, the other one as we will see in Boston. Data from the environmental sensor, pressure, humidity, temperature, peak data from the vibration analysis, the RMS speed, the board is stationary now so that's why you see all zeros and uh, the FFT transform of both the vibration analysis and uh, of the ultrasound uh, emission picked up from the analog microphone. If I go on the sensor map you'll see that the previous board was provisioned in Boston in one of my colleagues house and now the sensor in uh, Portland that we just provisioned is also online. You will notice that there is a status here, warning, I have no status yet for the Portland node. I can, and this is where the status comes from, it's basically a condition monitor over a certain parameter. To set that on my new device, I will go on the properties and I'll select, for example, temperature and select a, a normal range, let's say 0 to 25, a warning range, let's say 0 to 35, and an alert range, 0 to 40. I'm saving, and now if I go on the same asset conditioning monitor, you will see that my STWIN, just newly connected, is also expressing a, a condition monitor uh, value. So I'm monitoring the temperature, temperature here is 26, so I'm on warning state. And if I go on the map, now both devices in both locations I can see are in warning states. One function that is really powerful and that, that's the reason why I created an, uh, an extra device earlier is the, the data lake function. I'm able to download all the data that historically has been sent to the dashboard. I can select uh, all the six months and I can select all the data and uh, the data is available uh, the day after uh, that was streamed and that's why the device that I just created data is not uh, available for download. But I'm downloading the data from uh, the day device that was already created previously in Boston. It will be outputted as a zip file and uh, as you see there's no new board, there's only the, the older uh, device with 0521. I can check, for example, the environmental, I can check today's date, so this week, and the output is a, a JSON file. So it's basically it's a text file indexed that can be used in uh, and imported, for example, in Excel and can be used for data analysis and uh, to get insight out of the data themselves. So in conclusion, we, sh we showed how to connect uh, devices to this sandbox environment, how to stream data out of these devices, store them in a data lake and download them to your computer for later analysis. The ST dashboard is a sandbox environment, as screen. mentioned previously, and while the user owns the data, she or he can't connect the STWIN to its own AWS account. If a developer would like to build an AWS application from code using FreeRTOS and its middleware, I'd like to highlight that STWIN is a FreeRTOS certified and listed in the AWS device catalog and supports Wi-Fi integration and AWS over-the-air update scheme. The code is available upon being whitelisted and the request is available from the AWS device catalog itself. If the user chooses to use Azure as cloud provider, we support that with the SCWIN through the function pack Cloud Azure One. The firmware supports Microsoft Azure IoT Central. In a nutshell, a set of predefined cloud applications that developers can use to jumpstart their development. 
A user with a Microsoft Azure account can create an instance of a given application in his own account and start the cloud development from there. ST created an IoT plug and play capability model for ST Win to be imported in a custom application. Here's a snapshot of the application that can be created in your own Microsoft Azure account and the dashboard visualization part. You'll appreciate that this is not a sandbox environment, nor an application built from scratch from services, but rather an application running on a private account in a matter of minutes. Also in this case, let me walk you through a live demo of the functionalities of the SD-Win running Function Pack Cloud Azure One connected to Microsoft Azure IoT Central. In this case, the SD-Win needs to be connected via the provided SD-Link to the host PC via USB. Let's start with a clean browser. I will paste the IoT Central application, and as you'll notice, the, I am logged in here as myself on the Microsoft Azure Cloud, and I'm about to instantiate the application on my own account. I can choose between three pricing plans. I will go with the free one, and the only thing I'm asked for is a, a phone number to be able to just and to basically confirm my identity. So I'll confirm and create and the application is provisioned. Once provisioned, I'm presented with this uh, dashboard. I can go to Devices and create a new SD-Win device. So, new. It's a not simulated device, it's an actual device, so let's create it. And now it's created and I'm going to its property. Next thing we need to do, we need to connect it and get an identification to uniquely identify the device in the Azure cloud. And here I have an ID scope, device ID, and the primary key that I will use to provision. I am connected via ST link to the USB on my PC. So let's reset the board like we did earlier. So we want to change the parameters. So let's enter the SSID, the password, and the security type. Now, the scope ID, I will not automatically configure, but manually enroll the device. I will copy the device ID and the primary key. And that's all I need to identify the device in Azure. So the device is initializing and start to sending data up to the Azure cloud. And one, when I'm going here, I can check on the board status. You'll see that the board is coming online. It's coming online with the, the device model, the firmware setting, the manufacturer, etc. One very powerful thing that uh, I can do from this dashboard is to configure the sensors. Let's take a look, for example, here at the accelerometer on uh, the six axis. I'm showing here a 2G full scale. If I go on commands, I can change the full scale of the accelerometer, for example, to 8G. Let's run the command. And going back to the board status, you end refreshing. You will see that now the device is configured for an 8G uh, full scale. I have another tab here on telemetry where I can see the data streamed from the device uh, I have the magnetometer, gyroscope, accelerometer, and environmental sensor. Very powerful tool, thanks to the Function Pack Azure Cloud. I instantiated the un cloud application on my own account, and I'm now streaming data to my own account. So this can be an this slide starting concludes point to today's start presentation. Your own We'd application. like to wrap up highlighting how ST is offering a complete ecosystem for developers to jumpstart their design. ST has all the building blocks to build an IoT device, like IIS 3DW for vibration monitoring in today's discussion. And to lower the barrier to get started, we provide developing kits like the sensor tile wireless industrial node, 
SD-Win that thanks to pre-integrated software allow the user to target a specific vertical application. Smart industry in our case with function pack industrial predictive maintenance one. Thank you for your time today and for further information please visit www.st.com and look for solutions for smart industry or SD-Win.